So buying a home right now is expensive. In fact, buying a home right now is only cheaper than renting in four cities in the entire United States. So if that's the case, why are so many people still buying homes right now? I mean, not every single one of these people can be a cash buyer, right? So they have to be able to afford a mortgage somehow. Over the years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and refinance their homes. And during this time, I've discovered some unique strategies that actually can help you save some real money. I'm not just talking a few bucks here and there. I'm talking about hundreds, if not thousands of dollars off of your mortgage payments. And so in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly the strategies that I'm using for my clients in this market right now and how you can use these and apply it to your purchase as well. Okay, now the first tip that I have for you is instead of trying to lowball on the price of the home, I want you to ask for a seller credit instead. So what exactly is a seller credit? Well, it's exactly how it sounds. The seller is going to credit you or give you money at closing to help you cover some of your closing costs. So let's say for example, you found a home but it's been sitting on the market for a little while. So your realtor suggests, hey, maybe let's come in and offer $20,000 lower than what the price of the home is right now. And you're probably thinking, great, I got myself a deal. I just saved $20,000 on this house. Well, you might have shaved you know, $20,000 off the price of the home. What did you actually save in terms of your monthly payment? As a good rule of thumb, every $10,000 you can save on the price of the home saves you about $70 a month. So while you've definitely saved about $140 a month by doing that, I think we can do a little bit better. So here's what you're gonna do instead. You're gonna ask for that $20,000 in the form of a seller credit, and you're gonna use that to buy down your interest rate. Most people don't know this, but you can actually pay extra money to get a lower interest rate from your lender. So in this example, on let's say a $500,000 loan, that $20,000 could get you a full 1% lower on your interest rate. And doing that would save you $314 a month instead, which is more than double the savings of if you had done a price reduction instead. Now, while $300 a month in savings is great, what if you wanted to save even more money? One of the strategies that I've been using with my clients lately is something called a temporary buy down. As the name implies, the buy down is temporary, so the benefit really only lasts usually for a couple of years. The most popular kind right now is something called a 2-1 buy down. Now I've done a video breaking down exactly how to use a 2-1 buy down, but to put it very simply, you get an interest rate lower by 2% in year one and 1% lower in year two, and then it goes back to the normal rate for the life of the loan. So it's kind of like an adjustable mortgage where the rate adjusts every year, but the difference is you know exactly by how much there's a schedule to it, Additionally, it never gets higher than that end rate. So going back to our example of a $500,000 loan, a 2% interest rate savings in year one would save you over $600 a month. And then as we know, a 1% savings saves you over $300 a month in year two. So all in all, that's an overall savings of over $11,000 in your first two years of owning a home. So how much exactly does it cost to do something like a 2-1 buy down? Well, it's exactly the same as your savings in those first couple of years. Without getting into the technical details, the seller essentially is paying for your savings in those first couple of years. So depending on how much of a seller credit you can get, you can really maximize your savings, especially as you're waiting for interest rates to get lower to lock something in. Okay, so buying down your interest rate is cool and all, but are there any other ways to maximize your savings when you're buying a home? If you're using a conventional loan and you're putting less than 20% down, you're probably already aware that you have to have something called mortgage insurance or PMI on your home loan. As a refresher, this is a monthly cost that's paid to your lender to offset the fact that you don't have a full 20% down payment. But now what most people don't know, and something that I honestly didn't even know when I first started in mortgage lending, is that the mortgage insurance can be paid in full upfront instead of having to pay it monthly. Now, how much this costs depends on how much you're borrowing and your credit score, because conventional mortgage insurance isn't exactly straightforward. That being said, it's usually about one and a half to 2% of the loan amount. So on a $500,000 loan, the amount that it would cost to pay out your mortgage insurance would be about $10,000. So instead of paying it monthly, which would be about $200 a month, you could just use a seller credit of $10,000 to pay it off in full. So once again, comparing that to a price reduction, a 10K price reduction would only save you $70 a month, but using that 10K to buy out your mortgage insurance would save you over $200 a month instead. Now, here's what I've been doing with my clients lately. Every single strategy that we've talked about right now can be stacked on top of each other, depending on how much money you have available in seller credits to use. So for example, I had a client, let's call him Dave, we were able to negotiate $20,000 in seller credits for him to use in any way he liked. So what we did for him is we used 10K of that to pay for a 2-1 buy down and the remainder to buy out his mortgage insurance. And that combination saved him over $800, nearly $900 a month in his first 12 months of homeownership. To really put that kind of savings into perspective, that's the equivalent of getting a $120,000 price reduction on home. So effectively, instead of doing a 20K price reduction, which would save you about $140 a month, we were able to use that exact same amount of money. And instead, by using it towards your seller credits to use these strategies in this video, you're able to save nearly 
$1,500 a month. So despite the high cost of buying homes, incredibly high interest rates, using these strategies, you can actually see how it's not just possible, but probable that you can afford to buy a home in this market while you wait out the eventual refinance boom. Now, these are just some of the strategies that I've learned along the way that have helped my home buyers save a ton of money during the home buying process. But the thing is, it's not just enough to know how much you can save during the process. It really starts with understanding how much you can afford. Lucky for you, I've already made a video that actually covers exactly how you can figure out how much you can afford on your own before even getting pre-approved. Now, before you go, if you learned something new, consider hitting that like button. If you want to see more content like this, hit subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in this video next.